Yeah, great intro, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, any thoughts on what you're seeing in the market? Anybody? Any thoughts? <laughs> what do you think is happening in the market? You know, questions, why is it going up when uh, we know that most of these companies, a lot of these companies, overall majority of the S&P 500 is going to report uh, no earnings for the next couple quarters, they estimate. Uh, some will, um, you know, uh, but, you know, there's, there's even the best off, like a uh, Starbucks, uh, just reported that the, their earnings uh, and it was it was it was a miss. Um, you know, obviously there was going to be a miss, but it missed further than they thought. Uh, they said that their overall sales in the United States, I believe, was down somewhere around 70 percent, 60 to 70 uh, percent in the last couple of weeks uh, of March. Um, so I don't anticipate that changing for them uh, in the next you know uh, month or so. So. You know, with all the market, you know, knowing that, you know, that there's going to be some hard times coming, why do you think the market is still uh, going up? It's, it's about 20% above the lows uh, of where it was. Uh, what do you think is causing that? What do you think, you know, why are people still buying when they know these companies uh, are unlikely to produce any sort of you know, dividends or earnings. Um, and if there's no earnings, there's no, you know, there's there's going to be no dividends, right? Um, only a couple have said that they're going to continue to run dividends, but a lot of them, you know, uh, you know, it's going to be difficult for them to issue any sort of substantial dividends. So their multiples are going to be much worse. Um, you know, they're going to, they're basically going to be investing in companies, there are people investing in companies that are going to have no earnings. So everything's going to turn into a, like a Tesla or an Uber, where there's a you know negative yield or zero yield, and, and you're basically investing um, in these companies with no short term at least couple quarters of return. So why do you think that's happening? So what's causing the market to move up? Anybody? Why is the market moving up? Because uh, government putting in money, okay, good. And why, why would that cause the market to go up? The big players want to create favorable markets to sell. Okay, and it's going up. It is just partially recovering. Okay, no idea. Okay, all right. So uh, what we're seeing, uh, and you can continue to put in comments. You know, is again right. We look at the uh, market. There's the market. Uh, we look at. And we look at, uh, you know, this is the market you know, motion. Um, and then we see, obviously, it was, you know, up here, or like this, and then it dropped down, um, and it's starting to go up again. Now, um, from, you know, it's, it's recovered, you know, basically, not, not quite 50%, but very close to 50% um, uh, of what it's lost. Um, so, you know, what, what caused even this, this rise here, you know, seeing this rise in the market um, is kind of odd when you think about it because, you know, what's, you know, what could possibly pu be pushing it up? And I think that, uh, you know, the, the fact that the government is putting money into the market 
um, is causing it. And this goes back to the fundamental principle of why prices go up. And prices simply go up because there's, there's money coming into the market. It went down because money left. Now money's coming back in. And there's a point in a, in a down market where the sellers, there's no more sellers, right? There's not enough sellers to keep pushing it down. A lot of people are in cash now. Um, and they're coming back in because when we can borrow money at, you know, zero or a half percent or one percent and invest it and, you know, make a, you know, even if you make a yield on a, on a stock at two percent or one percent, you know, uh, plus the growth, um, you're ahead. So, again, we're, we're probably going to see, uh, you know, I think I mentioned this last week and the week before. You know, I guess that we're going to be somewhere around an 8 to 15 percent unemployment rate and the market will be back to where it was before it dropped, um, which is which is tragic because, um, you know, the market's supposed to reflect, you know, uh, you know, what's going on or at least in, in the future, what's going to happen. And this market um, is not doing that. I don't believe the market does that at all. I don't believe the market predicts anything other than money flow. And um, because there's money flow coming in, the market's, uh, the market's moving up. That's all there is to it. This idea that, in my view, at least in my opinion, you know, oh, it's the virus and you know, what the virus is doing is, is you know, why this, you know, the, the, the market's going up because they believe the curve is coming. Um, I don't believe any of that is more relevant than the fact that there's simply tons of money in the system now. Um, and we're going to have a bunch of stocks, a stock market that doesn't really produce any, any returns, right? Very, very small returns, which uh, accelerates the idea of deflation. Um, so we're going to have, you know, companies that, that sales are going to be, overall sales year over year are going to be down uh, for the foreseeable future. And their stock price is going to be back where it was, which, you know, totally throws away this PE ratio stuff about you know the PE ratio is going to be this you know you should be looking for stocks with a 14 or 15 PE ratio that's that's uh to, in my view not not the number one factor it's simply money in money out so um what does that say for us what does it mean for us um i think that you know if, you, if you're going into the market and you're looking at opportunities i'm just going to tell you what i do i'm not i'm not giving anyone advice about what they should do I can tell you my thought process of where I am uh, and, and uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt. I don't want you to trade with real money. I want you to trade with, with paper trading so you understand how to trade. But the kind of stuff, the stuff that I'm doing based on what I'm seeing is I am invested in the banks. I think that the banks are going to uh, recover uh, relatively quickly um, off their bottoms. Um, and and uh, they're going to continue to function. They're essential service, you know, and they're going to continue to function. A lot of the money uh, from the governments are going straight to the banks uh, in the way of issuing loans, right? They're going to they're going to guarantee those loans. So there's not a lot of risk for the banks. Now, unfortunately, the banks have to deal with zero percent, you know, interest rates being lower and them not being able to make as much money as they did because their their mortgage rates and everything. I mean, the credit stuff that they're going to be selling, the debt they're going to be selling as much. Um, going to cut into their profits. So, and they said uh, that they're going to they're going to continue to issue dividends at least for for now. So, so banks, I would say, are are, are definitely something that I look at as something that will recover uh, and do well uh, against the field, uh, more stable. Then there's uh, a lot of people are are looking at uh, energy and oil. My view, and this is only my view again, I'm not suggesting anything. I think oil for a long time has been on the outs. Um, you know, uh, tomorrow OPEC's meeting, uh, Russia and Saudi Arabia are really causing a big problem uh, with the uh, pricing. Uh, but even on top of that, there's, there's, a, there's a demand death. You know, it fell off a cliff. Um, the demand for, for oil has completely dropped off. Uh, you know, it's it's 20 million barrels a day. I've heard even higher than 20 million barrels a day. So they're going to probably cut production uh, of oil, but not because they're going to get the price back up. They might support the existing price. They might see a little pop tomorrow uh, if there is some sort of deal struck. But overall, oil's got a rough, you know, few quarters going going forward. Now, some people I've heard analysts say, you know, 50 or even 100 dollars by the end of summer. I find that extremely difficult to see, but you know, these are these are guys that study it pretty hard. So for me, energy is is a is a is a very 
dangerous place to be in. Uh, you know, it's it's very much uh, gamble for, for me at least. Uh, so I find it I find it challenging. And you got these other companies like Apple and and Netflix and Amazon and you know Facebook. How are they faring? They've done actually extremely well through through this drop. Um, but I don't know how long they can continue to to rise without people kind of looking at the rest of the field and saying, well, there's better value somewhere else. So um, it's going to be it's going to be difficult difficult to say you know when money starts moving around more freely. Right now, we're just seeing you know people buying into them because they feel like they're safe. Uh, portfolios and hedge fund managers, I'm sure, are getting in the action. It's difficult it's difficult to say. You know uh, what's going to happen to them, but I think it's it's going to be a struggle for them to continue to rise. I mean, Amazon's nearly at its all-time high. Um, you know, Netflix is still charging up. Has you know a little bit of fall off at the end of the market today because Disney announced um, that they doubled, you know, uh, almost doubled uh, their their users for their uh, Apple, sorry, uh, Disney Channel, their Disney Pay Pay. Uh, it's called Disney Plus. So Disney Plus doubled and you know almost doubled in volume um, of, of of their product. Unfortunately, though, Disney's got to deal with the parks and stuff like that. And and again, I you know I look at Disney, I think you know this 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 company's going to take is taking massive losses, massive losses. And I don't imagine that you know people are just going to rush back to parks um, to 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 be shoulder to shoulder and, and huge you know crowds and feel comfortable. I think that, that 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 there's a clear underestimation of how long this is going to take uh, to recover, and we're going to feel more comfortable with it. I was I was uh, watching again CNBC, and they were talking about how Asia analysts came on about Asia, saying Asia actually it wasn't an analyst; it was uh, TG, TGI Fridays, uh, uh, the restaurant chain, saying that in in Asia, some Asian countries are putting dividers between tables look like an office more than a restaurant because you know they're trying to you know still run businesses but have social uh, social distancing so that's going to be a tougher sell in, in the United States and Canada and Europe uh, where we're more more used to or haven't experienced this before and more used to more of a liberal kind of uh, movement uh, do you think that the imminent US possession of Venezuela the oil prices can go up I think that um, you know, I think that that oil. Uh, if I were Saudi Arabia, I wouldn't make a deal. That's that's me. If I were Saudi Arabia, I'd say, look, I produce oil cheaper than any of you guys. I'm tired of you know you know putting taking a piece of this market when I can take it all, so you guys can make money. I'm gonna keep oil prices where they are. I'm gonna keep producing. If you can't play this game, then get out. Now, that's a huge deal for the United States because the United States is uh number one oil producer or at least was um but they can't produce oil at the same cost that saudi arabia or even russia can so i don't see a large reason for for uh, russia or saudi arabia saudi arabia more specifically to you know reduce their production they could take the whole market if they want it so i i you know it's it's who knows what deals are being made politically for this stuff but you know the, the, even if they dropped, you know the the amount of barrels per day to 10 million, uh, drop it 10 million or 15 million, uh, there would still be a gap between, you know what's actually being used and needed versus you know what's being produced. The other thing to keep in mind, just so you know this, I don't know if you know this, but you can get, I think I mentioned this last week, you can get, uh, you know, a barrel of oil in Canada, uh, barrel oil for for under five bucks. You know, beer costs you five bucks. The barrel of oil costs you under five bucks. Uh, in in Texas, uh, in the United States, you can get oil. Um, I don't want to say specifically Texas, but I was, I, as I remember, somewhere in Texas. But in the United States, they're selling barrels of oil for five or six bucks. So this is the dilemma: if, if oil is being sold on the street for five, six dollars, how does it justify, you know, the contract price at twenty-five? It just it's it's this is really again pointing to the you know the fact that really economics don't matter really market data connection lost really it's not about you know PE ratio in my view this is all my view PE ratios don't matter none of this matters it's simply there's 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 money coming into the market that's what's making it go up this is 
there's no justification for some of these some of these companies i mean <laughs> i don't even know market how, data connection reestablished i don't even know how these markets some of these companies are going up i have no idea why why people are you know buying into these companies other than they believe that they're that they you know they're going to go back up to where they were which they will i mean there's no question they will but on a on an investor front you know why would you buy companies that are going to take a year or two years to recover now again the argument is it's going to go up it's eventually going to go up and this is absolutely true there's no doubt in my mind that the markets are going to go back up um but but the but the idea becomes you know what opportunity cost are you losing you know what opportunity are you losing because if this if these companies come back up um you know you know in two three months the market's back to where it was which to me is not would not be shocking at all even with the high unemployment rate uh, and no earnings uh, because of all this money in the system, you know, even if the market comes back up, at what point do you say, well, let me sell this stock, you know, let me go into something that makes money, you know, if you're going to just hold on to the stock forever, I can't, I just, I just can't imagine these companies, I think the airlines are, are they're devastated, you know, the airlines are going to be devastated for a while, um, you know, uh, what, what, even, even travel travel period, you know, if you're tra traveling in, inside a country, it's going to be a little bit different, but if you're traveling, you're in Canada or the United States and you travel to, you know, you do business in China or you do business in Europe, um, are you going to get there and they're going to tell you, you got to, you got to quarantine for 14 days before we'll let you walk around in the streets and stuff like that. I mean, until there's some way to, you know, uh, not quarantine, but some way to vaccinate uh, people, I think there's, you know, a cure vaccination, it's going to be a serious, serious future, a problem for movement around. Um, Re-established. Hello, everybody. Can you hear Market me? Market data connection loss. Market data connection re-established. Okay, let me see. All right. Okay, so so we have about uh, you know uh, a few minutes. We have about ten minutes left. I want to answer questions. I you know I I, I know um, 
you know, we talked about getting back into the training and learning about, you know, options and stuff like that. But I think that, you know, uh, for some of you, it's, you just want to ask direct questions. I do want to get back into that. I do. Um, I just, uh, you know, I know that there's a desire to better understand what's going on. I've been getting emails about that. And again, I'm not, I'm not telling anybody to, you know, uh, buy or sell anything. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. So, so what we're going to do is, is uh, starting next week, we'll do that. We'll do uh, Tuesday and uh, Tuesday and I got to do let's do Monday and Wednesday. Let's do Monday and Wednesday, but let's, let's, let's start that. Uh, let's start that. Let's try it next week, Monday, and Wednesday, eight o'clock try doing that next week. We'll start that next week. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, and what we can do is we can maybe devote Monday to, to what's going on in the market. And maybe we'll devote the Wednesday to, um, training. Yeah. Monday and Wednesday at, at 8 PM. So go ahead. Uh, there's about seven minutes left. You can ask anything you want. What, do you, what would you like to ask? If there's a stock or something you want to look at, we can talk about that too. So go ahead. I don't know what the WhatsApp group is. So you too. So I think that, you know, uh, Henry's asking, you know, stock versus options. It's really about what you're, what you're trading for. So, um, you know, there's not very often that I would say stock is an option. Stock is a direction I would take, but I am, like I said, I am some in bank stocks right now. And, and the reason I'm okay with buying the stock, <clears throat> you know, a bank, certain banks, um, is because they're still going to offer the dividend. So, you know, uh, you know, holding the stock doesn't, you know, at these prices doesn't seem like uh, it's going to, it's low risk for me. That being said, Henry, I still have on those same banks, um, diagonal spreads on. Them. So I'm, I'm, I'm January, 2022, um, owning, you know, uh, a bank. And then I'm selling short-term options against it. And the idea is to, uh, you know, get the uh, position for free. You know, if I do that a couple weeks in a row, you know, two, three weeks, maybe a month tops, I will have uh, that option free and clear and it won't cost me anything at all. Um, so you can't really do that with stock. You can do cover calls with stock, obviously, which I don't think is a bad thing at all. Um, and I would even, you know, look at short-term with them but you know stock i would say options for me is still the preferred approach for investing just because well for a lot of reasons one is that you can you can fix your so you can fix your um your uh your losses so i got a couple of positions right now where i bought the option on it directionally um and uh those options could end up being worthless um the short-term options but uh you know, I know exactly what I can lose. Where with stock, uh, and I've traded stock a lot, um, and I can tell you that, uh, you know, stock, I mean, the, the losses can be, uh, you know, in, in a day you can wake up and be, be down, if, you know, two or 20 grand just because you bought, you know, 200 shares on a stock that dropped, you know, 20 or $30 or 10 or $15, which is not crazy in this kind of uh, position. So, so I would, I would still stick to options versus stock, but there are, you know, I don't want to say you never, never use stock. I just, I said that because I don't want to, there's only certain circumstances where I think it's appropriate, at least for myself. I don't know how far is the group, but, but can we talk about blue chips, dividends, defensive stocks, growth, cyclical, and penny stocks? <laughs> okay. So, so I'll say penny stocks. Absolutely not. Never touch them. That's me. Don't believe them. Uh, believe in them. Uh, 
uh, no problem. So I don't believe in, in penny stocks at all. I think there's too much, uh, uh, too much, uh, what's, what's the word? I want to say it's very much a, a pump and dump game. And, uh, you know, for the average investor, it's extremely, it's a lottery ticket. So I'd rather stay away from, from penny stocks, personally, uh, penny stocks, uh, blue chip. I mean, obviously, you know, if you're, if you're buying, you know, and you want to buy long term, you can do that. There's not going to be a lot of dividends for a lot of these companies. We were talking about that earlier. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean though you can't you can't buy blue chip. Uh, but again, if you're going to buy blue chip, I'd still look at you know buying the option versus the dividend uh, versus the stock because there is no dividend, right? There's not going to be dividends at least for a few quarters or low dividends for these companies. So I would buy the option instead of instead of the stock um, because of the financial commitment. So like a Coca-Cola or something, or a uh, you know a Procter and Gamble, you can get the option for a lot less uh, than the stock in the way of you know how much you're putting up in the way of uh, capital. So and you want to be at least in my view, you want to be in a multiple different positions uh, to manage risk. Uh, the more different positions you're in, the more you allow probability to play in your favor. So, you know, putting all your money in one area or a large portion of your money in one area is, is difficult. And you control your losses if you use options versus uh, stock. Um, defensive stocks grow cyclical. I mean, you know, at this point, I would say, you know, there's, there's you know, on the way down, there was blind selling. Um, now this seems like there's blind buying. So, you know, I, some of these companies that people are investing in have a good shot at going bankrupt before the year's out. I, I don't, it's just blind buying. It's just tons of money going into the market blindly. You know, it's just, there's so much money sloshing around. So everything looks like a bargain um, right now. So, you know, today almost everything showed up in green, which is, which is pretty crazy. Um, some of these companies again have have a really rough future ahead of them. I don't don't understand other than you know if you're looking at, at value, if you're looking at you know uh, if you're going to pay dividends or you know PE ratios. It, none of that makes sense why these companies are being bought. But so so I think the bigger thing is you know money flow is the biggest and uh, most important thing that I look at is their money flow coming in. And right now there's there's massive massive money flow coming into the market. That's why it's it's not crazy to say, look, the market's gonna be up where it was or even higher, and we're gonna have double digit unemployment, you know, uh, in, in the market. So uh, there's gonna be there's gonna be some serious changes coming with, with uh, you know employment and, and what's needed and, and driving and it's gonna be it's gonna be insane. It's gonna be insane uh, you know uh, I don't know if it's going to be depression, but there's definitely going to be recession. This idea that everything's going to go back to normal, I think, is starting to, you know, people are starting to, to understand that's not really what's going to happen. But again, it doesn't matter. The market's going to go up. So to give you an example, tomorrow they're going to report, you know, I don't know, three million, you know, unemployment new new claims, unemployment claims it might be five million, it might be six million. Obviously, I don't know, but it's going to be big, and. Um, the only reason the market will go down tomorrow is because it's Good Friday and, and there's going to be a three-day weekend. But you could see that number. Like the last two weeks, those numbers have been terrible and the market went up on both days. So I, I don't, you know, looking at, you know, fundamentals, I don't think any of that is really, you know, overshadowing the fact that there's just, there's tons of money coming in the market. The sellers are, are not, not in control right now. There's not enough sellers. There's more buyers, uh, and I, you know, I assume the sellers are going to get back into it. But you know, the market could recover 50% uh, before it goes down again. You know, and and uh, it's it's money flow it really is. And now tomorrow they're talking about more money going into the system. They haven't even got the money, the two trillion dollars, <laughs> into the system. Congress is looking at extending the bill. So I, the amount of money that's going in is is you know it has to go somewhere. So you know the money's the money's going in to the market, and that's why wealthy people recover much faster than the average Joe, um, middle class person, and and um, it's tragic because we're, we're you know again they're going to miss the opportunity um, that that the wealthy have access to. So 
this is why you know educating and understanding this stuff is really really important because you know it's 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 so tough to to take advantage of this otherwise you're still chugging along you know and and making your one percent more in income net net per year if you're lucky um trying to keep up with the cost of living so it, it's tough it's tough all right folks we're done for the day i'll see you all on monday at 8 p.m uh if you're good type in yes or why good stuff all right folks again monday eight o'clock i will see you all here same place and uh and okay ronald and i'll answer this question which stocks are you keeping an eye on right now um yeah i'm talking about me personally ronald i'm not telling you to go do it to me the the the, the absolute safest place to be in if you're if you're going to go long um you know uh, and not saying I, I just spoke that the whole market is, is rising uh, and falling together really um ronald is is the banks the the, the u.s banks are are and canadian banks too but u.s banks are, are probably my favorite place right now just because um they're they're going to continue to to issue dividends uh, while a lot of the year you know world world banks around the world are are not I don't know if they're going to do it in Canada, uh, but in the U S it's that's my absolute favorite spot uh, I'm I'm looking at it just keep my mind on it so oh gosh folks well it doesn't really matter Monday's a holiday is that a problem for anybody you can all meet on Monday at 8 p.m. I'll do it. You do it, yeah. Okay, all right, that's good enough. All right, good. All right, holiday every day, yeah. All right, folks, have a great night. Um, any any that you prefer. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, yes, there are some that I prefer. I'm I'm, I'm apprehensive, uh, Henry, to tell you which ones. Just because uh, that that, that uh, concerns me that people are going to jump in, uh, but there are uh, you know uh, three in particular that are very very appealing to me um, just based on their PE ratio and the fact that you're going to have dividends and, and the cost to get in is relatively low. So I'll give you that piece of it. All right. So do a little bit of research. Uh, if there are banks you want to look at, let's do that Monday. Okay. All right, so Monday is going to be in market day and, and for, uh, Wednesday is going to be a training day, okay? All right, folks, have a great night and I'll see you all Monday.